Hey guys, welcome back to Clubhouse Kids. So today I wanna to share with you my October classroom, my infant and toddler classroom for my in-home daycare. We have a lot of fun Halloween themed fall toys out. So I wanna show you what we've been doing in here. I'm gonna share with you some activities, some crafts we've been doing. I'll show you our tot trays for this week. And then I'll also share with you our favorite books that we've been reading, um, sometimes at younger age. Uh, the books are hard to find. You gotta find books that are short, books that have like a lot of songs or rhythm to them. And so I'm gonna show you our favorite uh, fall Halloween books that we've been reading. And then I'm also going to share with you my October curriculum that we've been doing. I'll show you kind of how I have it set up. So if you're interested in that, stick around. All right, so this is my October curriculum. I do theme-based curriculum, so we pick a monthly theme and then I have smaller weekly themes every week. So since October is a five week month, I have five weeks worth of lesson plans. Our monthly theme is Spooktacular Fun. And then my weekly themes, uh, the first week of October, we did pumpkins. The second week, the week we just finished up this last week was Ghost Monsters Mummies Oh My. This week we are going to be doing candy corn. Uh, next week will be trick or treat. And then the last week of October, our theme is uh, bats and spiders. And so how I set up my binders um, is I have just the cover page on the front and then I just put um, just October on the side so when these are in my bookshelf, I can just grab and see October very easily. Let's learn about pumpkins. And then this is my weekly lesson plans that I put up on my board. And then I always have just the list of books that we, we will be reading for the week um, and then put the author um, on this page. And then behind that is any um, printables that I need to print for the week. So I can just quickly glance and make sure that I have my classroom set up. So I like to print everything, kind of set up my classroom on Saturday or Sundays for the next week. And so for this um, particular week, our first week of October, we did a Five Little Pumpkins uh, printable. We've been working on the shape oval and so we did uh, just dot the ovals. And then this was an art project that we did. And I will show you how those turned out when I show you my classroom. So that's basically how I set up each week. Um, and then you go into the next week that we just finished up. Um, on the back, I store my songs. It's not on here now because it's up on the whiteboard behind me. And I'll show you guys that. But when I'm storing it for the year, when we're done with October, I slip the songs into the back. Um, so I'm going to flip the camera around and I'll just show you guys the classroom and what it looks like. So here is the whiteboard all ready for the week. And you can see that I have just put up our candy corn lesson plans here. And I just pull these straight out of that binder and it will just show the five books that we're focusing on this week. Um, it gives me the three tot task boxes that um, here and then I can just set those out um, up there is where I keep my tot task boxes. And then it will give me the song that we're gonna be singing during circle time. And then every day I have one activity that I do with the kids. And then here is the October songs that I slip in the back of my binder after the month is over. And if you want a copy of these, I added this to my Teacher Pay Teacher uh, page. I'll link that below. Go ahead and print that off um, and use them in your classrooms. And then here is just a schedule that we keep and then here are our table toys. After breakfast, the kids just play on like we basically they eat breakfast at this table and then we clean up breakfast and then they get whatever the table toy is for the day and they just play for maybe five and some kids last five minutes, some kids last 10 minutes depending on the on the day. Um, it's just one more thing that they can kind of do. Actually, one of my kids usually pops in here and plays with them and I can kind of clean up their classroom, get ready for circle time. Um, and then after circle time, they're getting ready to go down for their morning nap. So 
Um, it works out really well. It helps me so I can kind of just transition their classroom and kind of get things ready for nap time. But on Mondays, we do puzzles. On Tuesdays, I have just uh, those little Fisher-Price uh, like plastic animals that they play with. On Wednesdays, we pull out the blocks and any nesting toys. On Thursdays, we do magnets. And on Fridays, we do uh, snap together toys. So if you're interested in a video on this, on I can just go through each of those days and kind of show you the toys that we do and kind of the setup of that. Give this video a thumbs up and I will um, work on that. Our tree here just has some fall leaves on it still. Here are the books that we've been doing and I'm going to pull out two of the books and show them to you guys. Just two of um, the kids' favorite books so far. The first one is Go Away Big Green Monster. If you have not heard of this book, um, this is a great book for little ones. So as you read the book, um, the monster gets bigger and bigger. So the monster has, big green monster has two big yellow eyes, a long bluish greenish nose, a big red mouth with sharp white teeth. See, and as you turn each page, you can see he's getting bigger and bigger. And the kids just really enjoy this book. And then, here, and then it says, you don't scare me. And then you start telling the monster to go away. So we're going to say, go away, scraggly purple hair. Go away, two little squiggly ears. Go away, long bluish greenish nose. And it goes all the way to the back. Go away, big green monster. And then we say, and don't come back. And... The kids love this book. It's a very, I mean, it does not take that long to read this book. It's a perfect for this age group because it's a under, I like to have an under two minute book works for this age group. And this book uh, is perfect for that. And the other one that the kids have been really enjoying is the Spooky Wheels. The Spooky Wheels on the bus. And it's just a lot of fun. Uh, things that you can do with the kids as you read it so they can act like little cats. Um, we can go round and round, make the wheels go round and round. We can be spiders spinning our webs. We can be singing mummies. We can be silly monsters wiggling and waggling. And they just, uh, if you have a really young group like me, you're just the silly one doing all this stuff, but they have smiles on their face and they love this book. So, uh, Sometimes your older toddlers will start clapping with it, and it's, this is a great book. This book I got through Scholastic. It is on Amazon, so I will link it for Amazon below as well. Um, but I made a whole video on uh, starting Scholastic in your daycares. So if you have not um, looked into doing Scholastic for your daycare, it's just a great way to uh, let your parents and yourself be able to get affordable books. I think that the Spooky Wheels on the Bus was maybe $2 on Scholastic. Uh, maybe last year I got it. I did not get it this year. But I have seen it in the magazines uh, for this year as well. So they still have it. Um, they always have books that are a dollar every month. And then really all the other books are always under $5. And a lot of my parents order, which has been really helpful. It gives me bonus points to get free books towards our classroom. So... Um, check out that video on how to start Scholastic in your daycare and I really encourage you to look into that. And then our calendar board for the month we are focusing on the color black, we are doing the shape oval, and then we always every month are working on counting to five. And so this month we have numbers one through five in candy corn. And then I have our two shelves of toys. Some of our more board books are over there. And then our table here set up here. So I'm just gonna go through my toys. Uh, this is a little Halloween house. Um, I have had this for years. My son is 13 and I think I got it when he was a toddler. So this toy has lasted forever. It's super cute. Um, I do not believe that it's even sold anymore, but Fisher Price will come out with other seasonal toys. Um, and when you see this stuff, you kind of just got to grab it when you see it because it's not, they don't make a lot of them. Um, I've seen little like spring houses out before. Uh, every Christmas they come out with different kinds of Christmas houses. And so I have yet to see another Halloween house. 
Uh, they do have like a Thanksgiving um, one out that I have seen, but if you are wanting themed toys in your daycare, um, when you see them in the stores, you just kind of got to get them whenever you see them because they might not be back the next year. So with this, I just, I keep a lot of our uh, little plastic toys and dolls and stuff in one bucket and I just grabbed out uh, a bunch of them that kind of look like they could be uh, Halloween. And so I think this one came with it and this one came with it, but the other ones are just from other little sets. And here, this is, the kids love to push that little rug there. And the bat up there makes some noise and stuff like that. So they like to play with that. And then behind there is just little places where they can kind of place the animals or place the little trick-or-treaters and stuff. So they are enjoying that toy. And then on the first shelf here, if you watched my September video, um, I had this little farmer market out for September. They, um, I do like to rotate my toys. Once they seem they're, like they're not interested in the toy, I definitely put it away. But this one, they are still just playing, um, playing with it every single day. Uh, still the favorite thing is this little switch. They love to switch that on and off. Uh, so I've kept that out for another month. I might keep it out for the month of November too. We'll see when I uh, set up my November classroom. Uh, this has been a really fun toy. Some of these are hard to find because sometimes the balls are hard to for the kids to actually push through. This one's not. Um, it doesn't really take much effort for them to get that through. Oh, it's going to get stuck on the red one. Um, but they like that toy. This is a new toy as well. This is from Learning Resources. It's a little tree house. And... Since we, in this classroom, we work on numbers one through five, this is perfect for that. And each, uh, behind each little door is a little fall animal and then uh, according color apple. And since this door has four, there's gonna be four uh, diamonds on this apple. And then you can pop that in the top and it will go down into this little barrel. So this is a great toy for them to play during free play on their own, but also a great um, group activity toy. And actually I got this uh, kind of in the middle of the month. So I think we will focus on this for the month of November um, as a classroom activity together. But behind each of these doors is just little apples and super fun. Uh, I pulled out our magnet puzzles. So, these puzzles click together. And so even your youngest kiddos can do these. Um, and then you can also make silly ones. They'll, all of them will click together. Um, so they, they've been enjoying that toy. So I've had this toy out before. It's not a themed October toy or anything. It's just one of my rotating toys. Uh, this I just got this year as well. I got this off of Amazon. I will link this below because this was... I'm thinking this was only like ten dollars. Uh, the kids really enjoy it, and I like it because it really it does not make any noise, but it has a lot of fun things to do. So you can push these up and down. You can turn his face, and then his uh, eyes and cheeks are a shape sorter. So there's that. This is a homemade toy that I've had for a couple years, but still the kids just absolutely love this toy. It's just made out of a puffs container. And then in it, I have some Gatorade tops that I have made pumpkin faces on. So all they do is just put the uh, Gatorade pumpkins into the top and they just fill it up. They, they do this over and over and over. So very cheap, uh, fun toy to make for your daycare or for your own kids. Um, I have our walker out because I have two that are recently uh, starting to toddle around and starting to let go of our shelves and our tables and stuff. So I think by the end of this month, they should be walking. So that's been exciting. I have a younger little guy that is just starting to sit in the bumbo. And so I pulled out this little toy. His favorite thing to do is, you know, put that in front of him and play, play with that. And then here's our second shelf. I have our board books up here. The kids' favorite board books this month has been Five Little Pumpkins 
and the Itsy Bitsy Pumpkin. So I have all of those and these one, these books they can pull down and read on their own and chew on or whatever. Um, and then in these cubbies I just have just another rotating toy, uh, this little phone. And then these I found just this year, um, just a couple weeks ago at Walmart. And super, super fun. They're little monsters and they each do different things. So that one you push down and it squeaks. This one you can turn his little head around and this, the middle kind of rotates and his little arms rotate. And then this one, you can turn the top and her eyes will change. And then uh, this is fuzzy and these are real silky feeling. So that has been a fun toy to add to my October uh, buckets. And then I went ahead and kept out our apples that I also had out in September. The kids still are just really enjoying these toys. Um, and then another super cheap toy to add to your October is just grab a pumpkin bucket from the dollar store. Like they spend most of the day just filling this thing up, dumping it, filling it up, and they just love to put everything and anything into this bucket and carry it around. The girls carry it around like a little purse. It's super cute. Um, but this is a dollar and probably the favorite toy in the whole classroom. And then I kept out the um, apple-shaped balls and I just kept those in this little bucket because they are still playing with those as well. And then our top task buckets for this week, our theme is candy corn. And so for in box one, this is um, just a pumpkin ice cube tray. And then I have some pumpkin erasers and they will just be putting them in each one of these circles. So we're just doing, working on a one-to-one -one correspondence with that one. Uh, box two is our fall vocabulary words. And so we just, I just read them, the fall words. Um, and then with my older ones, I might say, you know, hand me the acorn and they'll be able to hand me this card uh, by the end of the week, obviously not at the beginning of the week. And then box three is some puzzles and we're just matching up the candy corn. So we'll say pumpkin and we're matching up the other pumpkin um, and making candy corn. So there's little two piece simple puzzles like that. So there's only, there's only four of them in here because they're pretty little. And um, this is something I definitely do with them. All right, some of the art projects that we've been doing throughout the month, uh, we made this little ghost and the little guy that made it, he just picked the scariest eyes. It's a scary little ghost. Um, but it's just, it was a super simple um, craft to do with this little age because they just used a paintbrush and they just kind of brushed the, they could paint the paper any way they want. And then when you added the eyes, it just looks like a little ghost. So here's our little pumpkin patch. And I just dipped their thumbprints into orange paint and just kind of, you know, we just kind of stamped along the patch. And then once it dried, I went back with a black Sharpie and made little pumpkin faces on the pumpkin patch. Oh, I think these turned out super cute. It just says, I love my mummy. And this was just a printable. And then the kids just glued on little popsicle sticks wherever they wanted on the little mummy. And then since we've been working on the color black, you can see he glued just some black pom-poms on to each one of these black items. And then up here in our art bin, this is all ready for this week. On Friday, we are going to play Play-Doh. They love Play-Doh. Um, so we have some Play-Doh mats. We have this pumpkin. We have a spider web. We have a witch's cauldron. And we have a monster. So we will be uh, just making little shapes. And so I pulled out just four colors of Play-Doh. And this is some sparkly Play-Doh. Um, to kind of just play with these Play-Doh mats. We are going to make candy corn. And so I have out, grabbed a bunch of construction paper and up here, that's what we're going to make um, tomorrow. My older ones uh, will be working on matching the fall pictures. And so we'll just take a marker and draw a line to match the three pictures here. 
we've been working on the shape oval. And so when we do a color page like this, I like to make them half sheets because they're still pretty little. Um, they really can't color an entire page. And then the second art project we're doing this week is Little Monsters. And we are going to glue candy corn onto the mouth to make monster teeth. And I got different monsters for each one of my kids because I thought it looked super cute when they are hung up. So I got, so I made this one, I made that one, um, and I made that one. Here's the fourth monster. I'm gonna be, oh, I'm gonna let, let them choose which one they want to do. So, and I just have glue in there ready to go for our art projects. So this is uh, really simple to just keep everything into this in this bucket here. Um, you just kind of have everything set up um, on over the weekend for the whole week, and then I really don't have to think about it the rest of the week. This is our sensory bucket for the month. We're not playing in it this week. I thought I'd still show it to you guys because uh, the kids are having a lot of fun with it. I have orange bean bags. Uh, whenever we have porcupine balls, they are always a favorite, a great sensory toy for those young age. Um, some little pumpkins, and they like to put the little porcupine balls into balls into the pumpkin. And then I have some little rings here. And this is a great fine motor. You can stick them on them, and they have to get them off all on their own. So it's a little great fine motor activity to do as they're playing in these little sensory buckets. All right guys, thanks for watching this video today. Uh, don't forget to give a thumbs up if you want to see a video of me going in more in detail on the kids uh, table toys that I use or any other ideas, comment below. Give me some new ideas for videos and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.